let's talk Ceridian Insights and maybe just tee up who is Ceridian and, and what, what do they do and, and what did they announce and why does it matter? Yeah, so Ceridian is a human capital management platform. Um, they have several different products, they have, and but Dayforce is really their kind of their main software product. Yeah. And that's kind of what they're known for. And I think they had a little bit of a branding, um, not really a problem because I think both brands, both the Ceridian brand and the Dayforce brand are well known within that kind of human capital world. What I now kind of refer to as people tech because there's like employee experience and human capital management and then there's payroll and it's all, it, to me, it's, it's people tech. Yeah. So, um, but <laughs> I love how you simplify things sometimes. <laughs> you know, I'm just like HRM, HCM, CM, ERP, but no, it's like people tech, and that takes that plus things like Vivo and Work Vivo and, and yes. all the other. And I love that. Yeah. So they've now just kind of consolidated and their rebranding is Dayforce. That's really what they're known for. So yeah. it's like, it's the Ceridian Dayforce. Well, is it Dayforce? Are you using Ceridian? Is Ceridian the client? So it's really simplifying it and kind of lying on the brand that they, they're best known for and what the, those are the products that people are really using. So Dayforce is the software solution. And now they've introduced Dayforce Copilot. So Dayforce is one. Yep. Of course. Are you, are you, are you sure? Of course, it's a co-pilot. Okay. It's a co-pilot. Um, but Dayforce is also really where their data lies. So it's it's also where their wallet solution is. And so the co-pilot really makes sense there. It's where the payroll is. It's a, So to just consolidate everything to Dayforce really makes makes a lot of sense. So wallet, Dayforce wallet is actually how I first was introduced to them because when I was really just kind of focusing on fintech, um, it's a really great solution that offers on-demand pay, um, basically not having to wait two weeks to get your paycheck. And I talked to the CEO, David Ossip, at the event. And really, when you think about it, I mean, just from the economy standpoint, pay is so important right now. But the way that he explained it was really interesting and in, is that the, the construct of the pay period came from the automation of payroll because you had to capture and aggregate the data. Well, now, you know, that's with, with batching and everything, and that's no longer necessary, but we still have this two-week pay period. So, you know, throw into that that everybody's focusing on employee wellness and control and financial health, and they're eliminating things like credit card fees and check cashing charges and payday loans, and companies are seeing a higher retention. It's definitely a recruitment strategy. And one thing I found really, really interesting, one, they just hit the $2 billion mark in processed earn wage access, which is, shows it's very popular. But the thing I thought is so interesting in it is not just the hourly employees that you would think like, oh, they need to use it because they're running low on cash or whatever. They have really high earners using it. These are people who they're smart with their money. They don't want their money sitting in somebody else's bank account for two weeks. Why would you? You know, you have liquidity issues. You want to like, you want to buy something. You want to invest in something. Why wait two weeks? Especially if you've got a big paycheck that you're letting that float sit in somebody else's bank account. So it's really smart. I think the way that they're doing this. So we don't have a bunch of time, but want to just get to kind of some of their, their platform stuff on Copilot. So they've got just kind of the AI natural language processing for day force talent for HR service delivery, autonomous payroll, all of these things that just will kind of help HR people do their their task kind of jobs done to to focus more on the people aspect of it. So they've got a uh, Melody, when uh, the whole generative AI thing kicked off, I tried to compare and contrast uh, jobs or sectors that would be impacted most. And, you know, there's only two ways to to arrive at a conclusion. One is additive and one is subtractive. Or is that a word? I don't know. If it's not, I just made it up. Yeah. But uh, one way to look at it was kind of Web 1.0, Web Web 2.0, and Web 1.0, right? Hit you know travel agents, stockbrokers, uh, things like that, and and two was kind of uh, e-commerce uh, and also media, uh, so retail stores with Amazon, and then um, media with record stores, CD stores, and and VHS. And, um, you know, healthcare really wasn't uh, impacted. Uh, ERP and CRM really was was redone when SAP came out in the 90s. So 
Um, I like to, to view this generative AI as it's the sea of cubes that it's going to impact. Mm -hmm. um, human resources, um, accounts receivable, accounts payable, uh, customer support. Uh, I also think it's going to transform the, the legal and uh, medical uh, industries, but slower because they're just uh, so much more regulated. Yeah. But if you think about it, uh, the ability to go in and, and I really got um, uh, IBM CEO Arvind Krishna came out and said, hey, we've actually been able to, with an 80 degree certainty uh, through our chatbot that we created internally, be able to answer 80% of the HR questions yes. uh, accurately, right? And that was just kind of a, oh my gosh. So, you know, the knowledge bases are terrible. Gen, Gen 1 chatbots are terrible. Um, and I can imagine how much uh, action that Ceridian is getting off that. Now, it, you know, in, in their case, it, it's more about offering this as a service, uh, but you can imagine uh, the value that that could bring to enterprises. The second thing I think of is, is, is data and how to keep it away from somebody, right? I mean, HR data, you have, you have age, you have pay, you have, hey, have they been on a PIP? before has address right. like this information that everybody has to be parsed um, uh, just like they were in, in their current systems that only a certain amount of people can get access to a certain amount of data. And by the way, without even maybe you can confirm this for me, uh, even with generative AI, there's there's the, based on login into into day force, it keeps those um, keeps those flows separate, right? So a person can't go to the chat bot and say, hey, how much does um, Philip Moore make uh, right. per year? And I know that's a really simple example, but keeping the the data away from people who aren't supposed to get it was probably a highlight of, of this or, yeah. you know, no, no new security. It's just going to be based on the current authorizations and authentication that people have today. Yeah, and I think a really good way to explain that is like there are fact-based things and then there are sort of prose-based things where if you ask it a question and some, yes, these are facts, but they, they're sort of fluid facts. Like what's the HR policy for leave? Yeah. How do I, you know, so these aren't necessarily fact things where it's like, oh, that has to be protected because that's your per personal information or that's that's like relegated to this one particular or even you know, if we're not even talking about HR, we're talking just about um, enterprise data you don't have permission to access that. Those are fact-based things. But when it's just this kind of data where it's almost like asking somebody down the hall, like, what do I do if I need to take off early today to go pick my kid up from, you know, school to go to the orthodontist? How do I submit a reimbursement for this? It's my first trip. You know, really easy things that, that just takes away the, the complexity for the HR people, but also just makes it really simple for pe people to find information because we're all working from different places on different time zones. You don't want to wait till tomorrow to get an, an answer. So there's all of that sort of like conversational stuff that can happen really easily with AI that they're making it really simple and having those kind of lockdown parameters on all of that other information, which is the fact-based information that's kept secure. 